Hello, my name is Jennifer Engel, and most of the time I do videos about like how to improve your mental health and things like that, positive tips and tricks. And one of the things that happened just recently is that I got a new hybrid car. Now, before I got my car, I was actually searching YouTube and really trying to find how do you drive a hybrid car. Now, that might sound stupid <laughs> because it pretty much drives like an automatic, but now that I've had my car for a couple weeks, um, I wanna show you some tips and tricks about what I've learned on how to drive a 2022 Honda CRV hybrid. And maybe this could work for other hybrids, I don't know. I just have a Honda 2022 CRV. So here we go, here's my tips and tricks. All right, so here is the 2022 um, Honda CRV hybrid. You're going to definitely notice that there is the hybrid logo on here. So, one of the things that you can see that might be a little bit different, and I'm not sure if this is just newer cars or hybrids or whatever, I'm definitely not a car expert, is that it has buttons. It doesn't have like a stick to shift things around. So, one of the things that you are going to do, the first thing that you are going to do when you start your car is you're going to put your foot on the brake. You are going to hit power and then you'll notice it's red and it is in park. So if you want to reverse, you just click reverse. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it's very, very quiet when you turn your car on and off. And sometimes I forget that I actually have my car on or off. Uh, it, it happens more when it's off, so I will actually hit the power button a couple more times, <laughs> like another time, because I thought that I didn't turn my car off because it is so quiet. Um, so right now you can see it's green, it's in reverse, and if I let my foot up off the brake, we start going backwards. The other thing that's neat is you have this um, control screen here, so it lets you know like how close you are or are not to something when you're going backwards. And then if you want to drive, you just push D. And now we are going to go forward a little bit here, okay? And it's very, very quiet when it starts. That's the electrical part of it. Now you're gonna also notice, I'm gonna put it in park here, that there are some other buttons here. To be honest, I'm not really a big sports person, but there's Econ and there's EV. Uh, when I read about it in my manual, and I'm gonna show you something else, I decided that I'm really not going to use these two buttons much and maybe there's somebody else out there doing another video to kind of show why you would use those buttons. But one of the things that you're going to see on your power screen here um, is that, and I'm gonna show you a little bit more when I'm actually driving. You'll see on the left there, it says EV ready. It's already pretty smart. Even when I'm driving, you're gonna see that thing go back and forth between the green and the blue. The green is when it's really working on its electrical system, and the blue is when it's working on all of its other systems. And I found that it is actually very smart. Um, and so I really don't need to push that EV button. There was one time where I did feel like I wanted to uh, press that EV button, and that's when I was in a parking lot, and I was driving to the other end of the parking lot to a different store, then I actually did push the EV button and I thought that that was actually um, very useful. Another thing that I thought was really useful, and yes, I am an English teacher, and so I did actually go through my manual and you're gonna see that I have little tabs here. Uh, one of the tabs here is just marking um, all of the different um, pictures that might show up, like if something's going wrong or whatever on your dashboard, I wanted to know what those were. Um, so yeah, I have like my symbol meanings here. The other one that I thought was really helpful was the tire calibration. That's something different that I've never had on a car before. So if your tire pressure goes off, there's really specific things that you actually have to do in order to get your, uh, that tire signal off and to recalibrate it. So that's on page 450. Uh, let's see 495 and sometimes I find it really helpful to just go through your manual and tag things that you might actually need the other thing that I thought was really handy in this manual is on page 13 and yes I'm a <laughs> I'm an English teacher so I read it and I underlined some things that really made me think about it so what's kind of neat is at the top here you're gonna see there's this car 
And here's where it's parked, and here's where it's rubbing up, here's where it's driving, rubbing up, driving, and slowing down. What's kind of neat is it shows you the driving state, and then it actually like describes it in words underneath here, what you're doing. And this is what it might show you um, on your dash. And I'm gonna show you that before I take off as well. There's actually four systems in the hybrid. There's the electrical motor, there's the generator, there's the engine, and there's the high voltage battery. And so what I think is really cool is that it really shows you a visual up here of what you're doing when, and when all these different systems are going to kick in. And um, it describes in words when those systems are gonna kick in as well. Now that's great when you're actually reading a manual, but I found that actually driving the car um, really gave me a better sense of how to get good gas mileage. So I heard on hybrids, like you're supposed to get, you know, 40 miles per gallon, maybe on the highway or whatever, you get 35 miles per gallon. And I found I was only getting like 29 miles per gallon. And I was kind of wondering why. So here's what I'm going to show you of how you can get the most um, economic features out of your car. And this is really what I mean by driving your car. Um, because yes, it is similar to an automatic, but there are some things that are different. And if you pay attention to it, you can actually lower those gas prices and save yourself a lot of money. All right, so now we're actually going to drive the car. Um, this is your dashboard. On the left hand side here, you are going to see the battery life. Um, and it was kind of funny because again, I'm used to driving a regular car. So when I first saw that, I thought, oh, the battery looks low. Duh, this is a hybrid. It's a different kind of battery. So you have that on your left. Uh, the green is going to show you when you are, your, when your car actually is going into EV mode. And the blue is showing you when it goes into all those other systems. On the right, you are going to have your gas gauge there. Okay, and I actually like to have um, this on because it also shows me that I can drive for 308 miles before I need to fill up with gas again. So I really like that feature. Um, there's a lot of buttons here and I'm not going to show you all of that because this video is really specifically talking about driving the hybrid, but this button here is what is going to change your screen, okay? So if I push it here, you're going to notice that the screen changed, okay? And what I can do is I can use these buttons here to see which um, screen I actually want, okay? Uh, so here we go, I'm gonna push the button. And again, I can scroll through and it's going to show you all the different screens and things that you could do while you are driving. If you want to know what one is, all you have to do is hit enter, okay? And so this one is going to change the speed in distant units, which I didn't really want to do. So now I can just go back to this one again. I'm going to hit this one. And now it's going to talk about my cell phone. Um, again, if I move it again, we're going to talk about the music. If I hit it again, um, this one might talk about maintenance. Um, it says the oil life is 100%, so that might be pretty handy if you want to know what your oil level is. So then again, I hit this button. You'll see it changes up there. Um, to be honest, um, this one I think shows you like when it is going in and out of those EV systems and where it's powering within your car. Some people might like that, but I found, there you go, that's probably, here just for curiosity, if I hit reverse and I go here, it's showing you where um, things are actually like being used. Now let's go forward a little bit. Let's drive. And if I hit the gas, again, it kind of shows you where um, the systems are being used, okay? I'm gonna put it back into park. Um, so then I'm gonna hit that enter button again. Oops, sorry, the information button, not the enter. Um, 
this one is kind of interesting. I thought it was like gonna, oops, sorry, show me where coffee was around town. But if you hit enter, it um, lets you know how alert you are when you're driving. So that might be really ha handy if you're gonna go for long drives or you're really tired or something like that and you have a long commute. Okay, I'm gonna hit that um, I button again and I'm gonna go over. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure what this one is again, so let's just see what it is. Okay, um, so this one is talking about your miles per gallon. Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure. I'm not a car person. I don't use that one. So let's go with the I again. Um, this is the one that I really like, so I'm going to hit enter. So this is the one that I really use. I really like that it shows me the range. But then also, um, as I drive, you are going to see that bar go from like 20 to 40 to 60 to 80, and it's going to go back and forth. Basically, what that bar shows you is if you keep driving the way that you are, you are more likely to get 40 miles per gallon, 80 miles per gallon, okay? And when I first had this car, if you look at this number right here, it says 34.8. Um, that was only 29. I was only getting 29 miles per gallon on average. And when I actually started paying attention to this bar that you're going to see here, then all of a sudden I started seeing my miles per gallon go up, 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 up. And so in some aspects, it's kind of like a little video game or something. So when I'm driving, I actually pay attention to this to figure out how to keep making my miles per gallon go up. So let's actually take a drive and you can kind of see what that's like. All right, and you can already see that it is at 80 miles per gallon and EV mode is um, on. All right, so now I'm going on a pretty straight back road. It'll go for quite a while. You see my um, gauges going up and down. I'm coming to a stop sign, so I take my foot off the gas. We're cranking it into EV mode as I start putting my foot on the brake. You start kind of hearing that angel humming. Well, maybe not because I have my earbuds in. Um, but you saw the green really go to the left. So that's what it powers the battery with. Now I'm taking my foot off the gas and I'm stepping on the gas. Right now you see it go from 80 to 40 to like 10. That means I'm not getting very good gas mileage. Now when I take my foot off the gas, you see it start creeping back up to that 80. So one of the things that I do is sometimes I will put my foot on the gas and if I am accelerating and I start noticing it creeping back down, I will, well I'm coming up to a stop sign again, but I will take my foot off the gas and very lightly touch it. And then all of a sudden that gives me that higher um, score. So when I've actually been paying attention to this, that is what is making my um, miles per gallon creep up, up, up. Now, I also did compare and contrast the Honda CRV with the Toyota RAV. Um, and the reason why I chose Honda is because of reliability, number one. Honda is always reliable. Number two, there was a lot more room. I have men in my life who are like 6'2", six 6'3", six so if we're going somewhere, they need a little bit more room. And um, the other thing was I did like about the RAV4 was it had a little bit more of a sportier look, but now that I actually have my Honda CRV, I actually like the elegance of it. So those are some positives as well. I hope that this has helped you learn how to get a little bit more miles per gallon out of your hybrid or just give you some tips while you're driving your hybrid and things to think about or maybe just things to think about if you're going to buy a hybrid or not. Have a great day.